Hello, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back. If you've been here before, this is indeed Monday Matters. I'll be having a quick look at some of the news of the week. I'll be catching up with what I've been up to this week and telling about what's in the week ahead as well. Now, if you like this show, and I hope you do, please remember Imperial Thumbs Up on the button below. And if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and you'll be notified of all the future videos as they turn up. And of course, if you want to support the channel in a more concrete way, you can do that through Super Thanks or any of my online partners. This week has been a busy one for so very, very many reasons, not a lot of which have been to do with modelling. So why don't we just get a move on and have a look at the news of the week. First off today is the revamped Heikel HE177 Greif in 148 scale from Special Hobby. This started life as an NPM branded kit in 2006, but now Special Hobby say they're replacing some of the tooling with newly designed plastic. In these renders, the grey is the new plastic, white is the original, and yellow is of course for photo etch. The cockpit area looks formidable with all its levers and the detailed nose gun, and even the tail gunner's office has had a makeover. This kit is due soon into the new year. On an even higher level of fearfulness is this new 132nd scale kit of the Royal Aircraft Factory B2E or B2F from the First World War made by Luke Graf. Now this is an entirely resin kit which also includes plenty of extras that are 3D printed parts and a lot of bits of photo etch. When they say it's intended for the experienced modeler, they are not kidding. At a more reasonable and achievable scale is this new kit of the Sikorsky H34, what, after some modification, here in the UK we would call a Wessex, in one 144th scale from Mark I models. There are three boxes reflecting rescue roles, combat missions and export versions of the chopper. At this scale, you know, you could probably buy a few. Thinking of even smaller scale, if you've a 1 350th Japanese warship and you want accurate light guns, then Black Cat has the twin 13.2mm and single 25mm guns available at that scale. Amazing detail for such tiny items. Looking at vehicles now, and MiniArt has expanded its new range of the Sturmgeschütz 3 self-propelled guns with the version G in winter eye setup, including winter tracks. With a full interior and at 135th scale, this will be quite the challenge. First to Fight has been continuing a theme with this early war French AMR 38 light tank in 172nd scale. This is part of an excellent range of early war tanks at a very approachable scale. For the contemporary diorama, you might want this Soviet style sign from Spanish company Mac 1 Models. The inscription on the side reads, Happy Putin. Not entirely sure what that means, but there'll be some inference I'm supposed to make. If you're looking for something altogether less stressful, then maybe the range of zoo diorama figures from Kyodo is more your thing. Although I will say that the zoo's attitude to the animals and visitors mixing so much is not exactly what our own health and safety guidelines would allow. And finally, if you're using a lot of resin parts, then this dust extractor might be just the thing for you. Made by Micromark in the USA, it retails for a shade under $500, but do you know what? That's got to be better than a lung full of carcinogenic resin sanding dust. So, on the bench this week has indeed been the bench, as you can see, um, with the nice little corner unit um i didn't realize how many paints i had until i made that corner unit and realized i had to order an extension to it so i've ordered some more that's all going to be coming uh hopefully next week and that will be appearing growing sideways ever with more uh, drawers and shelves and it will get a lot more tidy as a result which is fantastic um what else have i been making well I have made this, um, the quick build Hawker Harrier, uh, probably a GR7, GR9, sort of vintage, um, 
a really quite enjoyable thing. You know, these these little quick builds, um, no glue, no paint, just some stickers. I think they're really good fun, you know, for sort of age six and upwards. It's a great way to get people into looking at kids to look at modeling and make things. The good thing about these, you can take them apart and put them back together again, of course, which you can't with normal ones. No glue needed either, which is fantastic for everyone. So I made that, put up a video about that, um, resolved some issues with shorts that I've had with YouTube. So I now know uh, how to sort of rescue the one that's still not on and then upload a load more hints and tips little shorts as well hopefully that brings people to the channel and um what else am i doing well this week i am at some point look i promise you, i've i've primed parts i have primed bits of my spitfire i've primed loads of bits of my spitfire i have also started the the following that, um, the, one of the little kits, is it little kits? Yes, little kits, started that. Um, so there's a few things that are going to be coming out this week. More importantly, perhaps, um, whilst hopefully you're watching this on a Monday, I'll be back in New Haven. Now you remember New Haven is where the Spitfire is being made by a company called Plastec and a little while ago myself and a few other YouTube creators and uh, magazine editors and people generally around the model making business were invited down there to the company where they are making this very kit and um, you'll have seen the presentation that FX gave us and my take on what they told us and what I'd sort of kind of read between the lines on some of the things that they were telling us. I also did a lot of footage of the actual manufacturing process and you'll have seen many very, very good videos already online about how the 124th scale Spitfire is made. However, I'm not 100% happy with the footage I shot and I'm not 100% about the shot selection. So there's a few things I want to add to it. So I dropped the very good people at Plastec a line and said, uh, don't suppose I could maybe pop down and do a little bit more shooting. And they said, absolutely, yes. In fact, in many ways, it'll be easier because if you're on your own, it's a lot easier than when you've got 20 other people in groups of four or five all trying to get pictures. And it'd be a lot easier. If you can come down, I sent them a shoot list, a, a shooting script with some um, visuals on, <laughs> really badly drawn. I'm not much of an artist. Badly drawn, but, you know, give them some ideas. They said, all of that's fine. Um, in fact, why don't we also do this? And we can, we can try sh showing you this and maybe how about one of these? And so the whole thing's sort of developing a bit. Um, look, I'm not saying this is going to be something on Discovery Channel, but if you think of like one of those how it's made videos that they do, uh, you know, how they make whatever Swiss Army knows, this is going to be about how, how do you make a kit, as in make a kit, using the Spitfire as the example. So I'm hoping it'll be a sort of a broader appeal than to just the community of model makers. I hope it'll be people who are just interested in modern technology and modern uh, technological systems and engineering and things like that. I'll try and make it as kind of like visual and fun as possible. So um, that's probably where I am whilst you're watching this. Um, Probably a good thing if you are watching this and I'm in New Haven because it is going to be so cold, so cold on the way to New Haven tomorrow. I'm doing this on Sunday, remember. Um, but, you know, I think it's going to be worth it. I, I'm not happy putting out what I've shot yet and stitching it together and making a video. Um, I don't think it's good enough. I really want, I've got some ideas of visuals in my head some sort of sequences that tell a better story about how this kit is made. I think I owe it to Airfix and to Plastec and to um, the designers of this amazing kit to do it justice. Um, and so that's what I'm going to try and do. So there'll be a lot of editing of that. Um, I'll try and edit out up a few other bits and pieces in the week, but it's going to be a little bit tight on time for very many reasons. But now I'll see what I can do.
Um, I'm also working on a Christmas project and I'm also working on my first awards ceremony. Oh yes, there is going to be a Heroes and Villains of 2022 at the end of the year. I bet you can't wait. I can't either. I think it's going to be quite fun, but you'll have to judge for yourself. So that's what's happening. That's what's going to be happening. That's what has been happening. It's all a bit crazy. Not a lot of videos going out, but you know, I'm working on plenty. So let's uh, just keep the faith, eh? Um, we've gone over a million views. We're edging up towards that 9,000 subscriber mark. So it could be a good turn of the new year, hopefully so. Anyway, that's what I've been up to. If you've enjoyed the show as usual, please thumbs up on the button below. And if you haven't done so, goodness knows why you haven't done so yet, but please do subscribe to the channel and click that bell and you'll be notified of future videos as they're released. And of course, have a look through the back catalogue and see if there's anything in there that interests you. In any case, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye. Then. <music>